Good afternoon. Yesterday you guys learned about writing equations from word problems and today we're going to do six practice problems. So just a reminder that the normal equation for exponentials is f of x equals a times b to the x power where a is your initial value and b is your common ratio. With word problems, it's a little bit different because they're going to give you a rate or a percent. So the way it's going to change is that if it's exponential growth, so this one here represents growth, A is still the same, but instead of B, you're going to have 1 plus R. Because remember, when it's growth, B has to be greater than 1, so that's how we know it has to be an addition. When it's decay... So this one is decay. B has to be less than 1, so we would subtract our rate. Okay, so let's get started. Let's look at the first problem. It says Manny bought a baseball card for $50. Each year, the value of the card increases by 2.5%. How much will the baseball card be worth in 7 years? So first, I want to know whether this would be exponential growth or exponential decay. So when I read this problem where it says the card increases, so if it's increasing, it's going to have to be growth. Okay, so let's start with our equation. So I would have y equals... Well, A stands for the initial value, so how much was this baseball card worth to start with? $50, so that's my A. Parentheses, since we said it was growth, we're going to have 1 plus, but now we need our rate. Our rate is 2.5%, but you can't just write 2.5. You have to change that into a regular decimal, and the way you do that is by moving the decimal place twice. One, two. So this would actually turn into point zero two five. So that's what we're gonna write here. And then to the x power. I'm gonna go ahead and add those two numbers together. So that would give me 50 parentheses one point zero two five to the x power. But now the question is asking, how much will the baseball card be worth in seven years? So we're going to take that seven and we're going to plug it in where the x is at. So this would turn into 50 parentheses 1.025 to the 7th power. Okay, and then we're going to put this into our calculator. And remember, I showed you that website, desmos.com. And I get... 59.43. Since this is money, I'm going to use two decimal places. So $59.43. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Due to a drought, a lake's depth has been decreasing at a rate of 4.7% per month. Before the drought, the depth was 215 feet. How deep will the lake be in 11 months? Okay, so first I want to know, is this growth or is this decay? Okay, so looking on this problem, I have the word decreasing, which means that this is going to be decay and we're going to use a subtraction sign. So let's start with our equation, y equals. I need to know the initial value, so since we're talking about a lake, how deep was the lake before the, the drought started? And it says it right here. 
215 feet. So that's our A. Parentheses 1 minus, since we said it was decay, our rate, 4.7%. But remember what I said before, you have to change that to a regular decimal. So 4.7%. Then you move the decimal twice, one, two. So this would turn into 0 0.047 to the x power. Okay, so now I want to simplify that a little bit. So what is one minus 0.047? That gives me 0 0.953 to the x power. Okay, but now I want to solve the problem that they're asking us. They're asking, how deep will the lake be in 11 months? So we're going to plug in 11. 215, 0 0.953 but then to the 11th power. So again, to our calculator. And you'll do 0.953. And I get 126.6. But then we have to label it. We're talking about feet. So 126.6 feet deep. Next problem. A new car depreciates 11% per year. If Michael bought a car four years ago for 24,500, how much is it worth today? So because of this word depreciate, is this going to be growth or decay? It means that it's losing value, so it's going to be a decay problem. So let's start our equation. Y equals A stands for the initial amount. So how much was this car worth at the beginning? Well, it says he bought it for 24500 so that's the initial value. Parentheses 1 minus, because it's decay, what's our rate? 11%. But we're going to change that to a decimal. So if I have 11%, the decimal is always at the end. So I'm going to move it twice. 1, 2. So this would be 0 0.11. And then that's raised up to the 11th, or I'm sorry, the x power. So now let's simplify this a little bit. 1 minus 0.11 comes out to 0 0.89 to the x power. And now let's solve the question that it's asking. How much is it worth today if he bought it four years ago? So we're going to use that number 4 where the x is at. Okay, so to our calculator again. Twenty four thousand five hundred times point eighty nine to the fourth power. And I get, so this is money, so dollar sign, 15,372 dollars. Okay, next problem. Edwin deposits a thousand dollars into a savings account. The account earns 12% interest each year. 
how much money will be in the account in seven years? So first, is this going to be exponential growth or exponential decay? Well, since the account is earning money, that means that the amount in there is growing. So exponential growth. So we we'll start off with y equals what is the initial amount? How much money was in that account when it first opened up? What well, says he deposited $1,000? So that's our A value. Parentheses 1. Since we said this was growth, it's going to be a plus sign. Rate. So our rate is 12%, but we need to change that to a decimal. So 12%. And then if I move the decimal two places to the left, that gives me 0.12. So 0.12 to the x power. Now let's simplify. This would be 1.12 to the x power. And now let's solve. The question is asking, how much money will be in the account in seven years? So that means that we're going to plug in seven for our x value. So 1,000, 1 1.12 to the seventh power. So let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. And I get, and again, this is money, so I'm going to put dollar sign, $2,210.68. So 68 cents. Okay, next problem. A particular type of bacteria doubles in number every hour. If there were initially four bacteria present, how many bacteria will be present after eight hours? So this one doesn't really tell us growth or decay. We're going to have to look at what it's telling us. If it is doubling, is it getting bigger or smaller? Which makes this exponential growth. So we would start with y equals, what was the initial amount? So the good thing about this problem is it has the word initial, 4. So that's our A. Parentheses. Since it's growing, I know the number inside the parentheses has to be bigger than 1, but it doesn't give me any percent here. You have to use that word double. So when something doubles, you know you do it times 2. So we're going to put 2 here, then to the x power. So if I wanted to solve this question, it says how many bacteria will be present after 8 hours? We're just going to plug in that 8 to the x place. So it would be 4 times 2 to the 8 power. Then just put that into your calculator. And I get 1,024, and this is bacteria. Okay, and our last problem. A tennis tournament starts with 1,024 players. Only half the players move on each round. How many players will remain after six rounds? So... Is this an exponential growth or an exponential decay problem? Well, since it's a tournament, you only ever have one winner. So from 1,000 down to 1, it's getting smaller. So we know that this is an exponential decay. So starting our equation, y equals a. a is our initial amount. How many players started in this tournament? Well, it's up here, 1,024. Then it says only half the players move on each round. 
So this is like the previous problem where there's no percent. You just have to use that word half. So one half to the x power. So if I'm answering the question, how many players will remain after six rounds? What I'm going to do is plug in six where the x is at. So this would be 1,024 times 1 half to the 6th power. Put that into your calculator. And I get 16. So after 6 rounds, there will be 16 players left. Okay, hey guys, and that's it for these example problems. If you have any questions, make sure you either send me a private message on the assignment or you can send me an email.